Hi there and welcome to Web Talks. Today we're taking a look at waterproof jackets. Now we get asked a lot of questions about waterproof jackets and what we're hoping to do today is to answer some of those by looking at the features and the fabric and help you make the right decision about the correct jacket for your chosen activity. Now jackets cost anywhere from between 60 to over 300 pounds so it really pays to get this decision right. We're first going to take a look at the material that jackets are made from. Now when I was a kid I was sent on school expeditions with a cagoule on my back. That did a fantastic job of keeping the sweat in and making me feel very damp and very uncomfortable. It also means you lose a lot of body heat and that's why having a breathable jacket is really important. Now in terms of fabrics it basically boils down to two types, coated and membrane. Examples of membrane fabrics are things such as Gore-Tex and Event. Here on my left, we've got an example of a coated jacket from the North Face, and on my right, an example of a membrane jacket from Berghaus. Now, with membranes, it's really easy. There's just the two names you've got to remember, Gore-Tex and Event. When it comes to coated jackets, it gets a little bit more tricky as each brand has their own name for a coated fabric. So for example, the North Face use High Vent, Berghaus use Aquafoil, Mountain Equipment use Dry Light, you get the picture. So what are the main differences between these fabrics then? The first and most important is a question of breathability. When you sweat, you release water vapor and membrane jackets do a much better job of letting that water vapour through. Here comes the science bit. Membrane jackets have a microporous layer. What this microporous layer has is holes, and the holes are large enough to let water vapour out, but they're small enough to stop rain coming in. Next, it's a question of longevity. For a coated jacket, by its very nature, it has a coating that will eventually wear off. Membrane jackets, the membrane is permanent. Next, durability. Membrane jackets with their construction use two or more layers, whereas when you actually come to a coated jacket, it's generally one. So if this was the case, if a membrane jacket is always better than a coated jacket, what's to stop you going for a membrane jacket every time? And it's a question of price. Coated jackets by their construction are much cheaper to manufacture than membrane jackets and that's the main reason they're cheaper. So we've taken a look at fabrics, next we're going to take a look at features and what's really important to consider when looking at the features for your jacket is what sort of activity are you going to be doing. What I mean by that is if you're a dog walker for example you're not going to need a short alpine cut jacket which you can flit a climbing harness underneath. Likewise, if you're a climber, you're not going to want to have a long jacket that's going to restrict your movement. So it's really important to consider the features when you think about the activity you're going to be doing. The jacket I'm wearing today is a high-end, feature-rich jacket, just so that I can show you most of the features that are out there in the market at the moment. First off, we're gonna start with the hood. Now the hood we have here has a stiffened peak. You may also find other jackets have a wire that goes around the outside. They both do the same thing, which is to keep rain away from your face. If we look at the back of this hood here, you'll also see a volume adjuster. This helps keep the hood close into your head. And nearly all jackets will have these draw cords on either side of the face. These help keep it close in to the face itself. Now for some people, it's really important to be able to zip a fleece into their jacket. And there are both advantages and disadvantages to this. The advantage is that come winter, you've only got one coat instead of two to put on. Disadvantages though are that you're limited to a fleece from the same brand and you may also get a cold spot down the front of the jacket in very cold weather. Zip-wise, there are three main zips to look out for. Firstly, this original zip, as you see here, 
These generally are protected by a storm baffle or double storm baffle, which stops water getting through. The second type is this water resistant zip that you see here. These do an excellent job of keeping all but the very worst of weather out. And lastly, we have what are called waterproof zips. They do exactly what they say on the tin and keep everything out, and they'll be specifically marked as such on the website. Whilst we're talking about zips, one natty little feature you'll see on some jackets is this pit zip here. This helps breathability if you're sweating a lot. Now for some jackets on the cuff, you'll find that they're elasticated. This type we have here is a Velcro cuff, which is more functional and comfortable. Pocket wise, my rule of thumb is to have as many as possible. You can't have too many. Generally, you'll find that most jackets have at least two on the sides here. Other examples of pockets you might find though as well are a ski pass pocket on the arm. And here, this jacket has two chest pockets. These are really good for walkers for keeping your map in. You might also find it important to have a mesh inside pocket as well. Let's take a look inside the jacket now. Now, nearly all jackets will have these hem cords down at the bottom. These pull in and make sure your insulation is good. But some jackets will also have this additional waist hem cord that you see here. And there you have it. We've covered most of the features that you will see out there in the market. Hopefully, you're a little bit more clued up now as to what's important for you when you choose your waterproof jacket. Thanks for watching.